Warm welcome from my side also. So my name is Teemu Paja. I'm from Siemens Osaka Yhtiö in Finland. And uh, I was given a pleasure to give you a brief introduction on the OPC in Siemens products. Uh, of course, Siemens, we have quite a wide range of products. And it was a little bit challenging to pick the products what I will show you. So I more or less divided the presentation into two pieces. So I will talk about the solutions for the district industry and also for the process industry. Since we have products for the both areas and uh, our product portfolio is quite wide as you might know from the real life. So for the discrete industry, I divided in the presentation for three parts. So more or less for the, for the HMI or the SCADA level, we have two product lines and then one for the control and PLC level. So this is for the discrete industry and then for the process industry, there is an additional breakout slide in between. So if we start from the SCADA level, so in the SCADA level, we have a product called Simatic WinCC, which is our, our SCADA software for visualizing and uh, giving the user interface for the user. And in this tool, we have actually quite many different OPC platforms already implemented. And uh, there we have also, for this audience, the OPC UA. So both as a server side and also as a client. So we can have the WinCC as a OPC UA client to other system, or it can provide the content it has also as an OPC UA server. And of course, the main usages are, for example, the connectivity to MES, ERP side, or the third-party applications just created with, with normal, normal programming languages nowadays. And then the connectivity from WinCC towards the PLC level is done typically in the Siemens world with our S7 protocol in nowadays, so that you have also the connectivity to the PLC level via the WinCC SCADA software, so if that you can have the data from, from the PLC level, from the plant fall level via the SCADA system. So that it offers as a gateway solution straight away via the SCADA system. You don't need to have a separate connector box. Also, what is nowadays possible, we have a quite wide range of con uh, operator panels. So these are typically panels which are attached next to a production machine or in the field. And in the panels, we have also nowadays an OPC UA client so that you can connect the operator panel to, for example, the WinCC server, as shown in the previous slide, or there are also different uh, application devices. For example, the Simocode Pro, it is a motor starter which in-houses OPC UA server within, so that you can already have a low voltage motors connected in the field level via the Simocode Pro to, for example, operator panel via OPC UA. So you don't need to have any PLC in between, which is something new. And the ranges of the panels come from 4 to 22 in dimension, so in inches, sorry, in dimension, so that you have quite wide range of varieties. For connecting pure PLCs, if you don't want to have a SCADA system in between, we have a product called Simatic Net, which in house is then uh, a software solution, it is an OPC UA server, as an example, and uh, via that you can then have an OPC UA connectivity straight to the PLC level, so S7500, S7300 and S7400 in the Siemens PLCs, so that you don't need to, you have different varieties to connect to the PLC level, I would either via SCADA, as shown in before, or then just as with the pure software addition in between. And there are ways to scale up the solution depending on your, on your need. And also, actually, the Simatic Net houses also other 
other OPC protocols, the classic ones, and in addition, something that hasn't been mentioned here, at least when I was present, is the SNMP OPC. That is also in-house there, so if you want to have the network connectivity via the OPC, there is also a protocol for that. So these, in a nutshell, are the connectivities for the discrete industry, so more or less like a production machine type of things. Could someone open the door? Then if we go a little bit forward, so when going to the bigger scale, we move to the process industry side of Siemens offering. And in the process industry side, I selected two different approaches. One is for our DCS, it's called PCS7, and the other one is then something which is not too much mentioned, but it's something I would a little bit like to hide out, highlight because it's also something closest to, for example, Industry 4.0. It's, it's our SCADA system without limits. I will talk about a little bit about it in, in the upcoming slides. So for PCS7, so PCS7 typically is used for, for, for process industry, and there you have either a, a normal ongoing process or a batch process, depending on type of goods you are making. And the process control systems are typically wider range of, of uh, production lines. The scale of production is bigger, the EO scale is much, much larger. And in there we have an OP, open PCS7 station. It's an own PC, which is typically then put it into a DMZ zone of the automation side, just because of the security, so that you can isolate it from the automation network. So you put that typically in between an, an automation firewall here, so that you can separate it also from the process network. And via the open PCS7 station, you then have also, for example, OPC UA connectivity, or also the classical OPC connections. But nowadays, we, we prefer the UA in the sake of the security, as also mentioned in the morning side of the presentations. And also in there, if needed, still nowadays, we have also the OADP direct connectivity to database. But, but with the OPC UA, the security is better and also it's easier to handle from the security wise. For, for, the, for the SCADA without limits, so we have a product called WinCC Open Architecture. And what is special with this product? Of course, it has OPC UA inside, same way as the normal WinCC. It has an OPC UA client. It has an OPC UA server. And also it has an OPC UA alarms and conditions, or the alarms and events in the previous name. But what is special with this product is the scalability. So in the, in the smallest range, you can fit it you can fit it in the PC size of uh, size of this. So like like a Raspberry in the smallest scale. In the largest scale, what we have done with this product is the Hadron Super Collider in CERN, the ring. It is controlled by this product, and you can think that uh, there are 10 million tags in that system, and they are fetched once in a second. So the amount of data is huge. And this is the example of Industry 4.0, because that system carries that data. And there is a linkage between different systems with the OPC implemented in that system. But the system scales up, so you can have it as a single system or up to 2,048 distributed systems. So it's like everything in between. So these are more or less what I gathered from, from Siemens side. I think I stick it also at the timeline, which is good. So any questions, I can open up more on the certain areas or also open up the different areas of our products. For example, 
there was a discussion about the the building automation. So this software has also Parknet connectivity built in, so that if there is a need for gateway, that's an easy, easy, ready gateway between Parknet and OPC UA. So that's Siemens in a nutshell. Any questions? I think the true knowledge is there in the back row, so can you Pepe comment or do you know? The data models, are they visible to OPC UA in a WinCC? So certain products have full, and certain has only the created visibility. Put it that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a technical guy. You might know this. Yes. Is the uh, UA server at the PLC level? Currently, not. Okay. So how that connection to upper levels is? You can use, for example, this, so that uh, you would have a gateway between as a PC, and then uh, you would have the Simatic Net software currently. That's the current situation. What the future brings, we'll see. Are you aware of any uh, development efforts in that regard? <laughs> <laughs> the future, we'll see. <laughs> yourself, uh, you mentioned that you prefer OPC UA nowadays, but how is it with, uh, with your customers? Is there a demand for OPC UA or do you even need to push it? I think it depends from customer to customer, because there are quite, quite many still systems which have been built over the years, and they still use the, the classical way of OPC. And of course, nowadays more and more the security is coming up. And our preferred way is then when we start doing segmentations and all this into the industry network. The question comes that, OK, do we open the whole size of an elephant in the segmentation, or should we change the protocol to, for example, OPC UA, which goes much, much nicer as a security-wise through, through the segmentations and through the firewalls in the industry. So there are both. Customers are asking both, but of course, through the security approach, what we have, it's better to have protocols which can be limited easily and monitored more easily in the in the in the automation network via the security wise. Yeah. Yeah, myself, I see that OPC UA is also easier to take uh, take in use, and the configuration is much simpler and more fast forward, and the interoperability between the applications is is interoperable. Yeah, let's say that um, I think everyone who has done the distributed COM setups in Windows knows that uh, it's not the easiest world to live in. And uh, and when you then patch the systems and bring in, for example, the micro patches, you never know are the decom settings the same after the patch implementation. And nowadays, it's uh, it's also I want to address the world that the, the world is changing from from what we had in the past, where you had an automation system or a DCS system, and you had a philosophy of never touch running system, because it's there, it's built, it's it's there, but in the modern current world of uh, where we live in, we are shifting more and more to the world where also the automation systems are kept up to date, 
on the OS level, on the patches, on the, on the virus scanning. And this leads into the role of patch management and updating. And then if you have the connectivity between, which might be broken by these updates, in the long run it's better to change it in the way that it's easier to maintain. Good. Something else? No, there's still three minutes. <laughs> but I can give it for someone else. So, thank you.